Well, hello and welcome once again to New Beginning Christ Ministry. So glad you tuned in today. Praise God. We just, uh, well, I don't know what the weather's going to do. Praise the Lord. We still have I'm snow. telling you. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I'm glad the Lord's in charge. Praise Amen. If Amen. it was me now, I'd have all the flowers blooming. Oh, and I'd, yeah. I'd have the temperature Perfect about weather. 70, 72, <laughs> day and night. You know, praise God. Anyway, I guess the reason God's in charge and not me. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, you know, I guess if we just had perfect weather all the time, it'd get boring. It would. I really believe it would. I do like the change in the seasons. I do. But I, I want do. them to be like exact. Okay, three months for spring, three months for summer. Three, you know? I'm the same way. I want it to be just exactly like I want it. That's so, it. But you know, come see. That's our problem today. Everything we do, we do as unto our flesh. That's right. What our flesh, that's what, you know, and we need to get back to Scripture and, and get back to what our, our soul needs. That's right, right. Not what our flesh needs. I think that's, we're going to be talking about that in uh, Second Thessalonians this morning in our study. Uh -huh. uh, praise God. Because uh, we need to get back to where Christians were when the miracles were taking place. It's not that the miracles have ceased. It's the fact that all we, all Christians want now is an instant. And they want fleshy things, not spiritual yeah, they, things. Yeah, everything's to the flesh. We was listening to some music this morning, mm -hmm. and it was good music. Don't get me wrong. It, it, it sounded good, mm -hmm. and it appealed to my flesh. But after I stopped and listened to it for a little while, I said, that's not of God. That's just man trying to make money out of something, mm -hmm. trying to look good. Praise God. So all music, they, even though it sounds good, uh, and all these big recording artists, uh, praise God, uh, we have talked to several people that do not go to the, what is that, National Quartet Convention. Quartet Convention, yeah. And they said because it's virtually overrun with homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Isn't that sad? And, and they're making music and people are buying it, and, and there's no spirit in it, there's no Jesus in it. Praise mm -hmm. God. It, it appeals to the flesh, and so they buy the music, but it's not uplifting as unto the Lord. I don't know yeah. when it's been since I've heard a new song come out that mentioned Jesus or God at all. In the correct way. Yeah. Well, even in the, even the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they, well, they just kind of just, well, let's put this word in there, and that'll help us sell records mm -hmm. to those foolish Christians. And But we need to be doing <coughs> things as I said the other day at a meeting, as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. In other words, when you're doing something, no matter what you're doing, would it make Jesus happy? Would, are you doing it unto Jesus for the right reason? Not to be seen or heard of men, but to, to get rich or be popular or appeal to the flesh. Praise the Lord. And I think that's sad to say, that's where a lot of the church is today. The, the sermons are men-pleasing. The songs are of, to appeal to the flesh. And, uh, man, give me the old hymns. Oh, yeah. Give me those things where we could sit down. When people moved, when people came into a service uh, already ready to worship. And uh, to me, it's so awkward, I guess the best word I can think of, that people come into church and they want to visit and drink coffee and have breakfast and everything else in church. And then when they leave, it's like they just leave everything spiritual behind them and go right on back out into the world until the next time they come into church. And then they put on that, that self-righteousness in the church. Praise God. It ought not be so. Praise God. We should worship Jesus 24 hours a day. We're going to be talking about the apostasy today, too, in 2 Thessalonians, because the Bible says it's going to happen. So believe me, folks, if, it's, if it says it in the Bible, it is going to happen. And an apostasy means there's a great falling away. That is, a professed Christians with a head knowledge of Christ. Uh, those with a heart knowledge in these troubled times should be drawing closer to God and, and waiting on God. Not, no fear about things. You know, good grief. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You've got enough sufficient for the day. 
That's right. Today, praise God. But anyway, we're going to get into some music here. We get, before we do, though, we got a couple of announcements I we do. need to make. I Help do. Help our folks up out there at Ridgeway. Yeah, this is about the Beacon Park. This is the May 14th through the 15th. I know you can't read this, but you're welcome to call 870-743-5954 concerning the Beacon Park. they got a place to park your RV and everything yeah, during this event. Yeah, talk to Arlen Adams out there. Praise God. And then this one's coming up in June, and this is a, like a gospel bluegrass uh, festival type deal. You don't want to miss these. Again, call the same number. 743-5954, and I'll tell you all yeah. about it. <laughs> and our adopted kids are quite uh, familiar with a lot of these, know these folks mm. and everything, and they said they're going to try to come up and watch a lot of it. I hope and so. And the thing of it, Art, uh, Arvin has done such a tremendous job out there. Yes, he has. At Beacon Park, and uh, if you have an RV, they have RV park. You can call ahead and reserve something. Mm -hmm. Praise God. They have a wonderful snack bar out there. A lot of good meals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, music is great. And the fellowship. Wow. Lots of local fun. You see yeah, people yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, and you know what? Ask your local restaurants, businesses to support this. To just post one of these up. Boy, I tell you what, they had a little bit of help. Yeah, just a I've little bit of help. I've talked to Arvin in the past, and, and we just... He doesn't get the support that he needs from no. the Chamber of Commerce. No, he doesn't. Uh, to advertise this. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people come from a long ways just to come. And not only just for the program, but for the fellowship. Absolutely. And uh, we sit around during the day under the shade of a tree and, yeah. and play a little music and visit and just have a good time. And really, it, it, it takes a better part of a week. Time it to get does. settled in and get to visiting. Y'all just come on down. <laughs> yeah, and the wonderful folks out there in Arvin's Church, praise yeah, God, they are. Uh, that are so helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, help you get parked, help you set up your RV, help you just never, do never everything. Never been treated nicer. Yeah, yeah, you'll just really, really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We always do. We do. Well, <clears throat> I also I want to say happy anniversary and happy birthday to everybody that's had a birthday or an anniversary of last week. Praise mm -hmm. God. Aren't you glad we're live another week? Amen. <laughs> that's a blessing right it there. It is a blessing. And in my life, that's a miracle right there. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to get up in the morning and, and uh, be able to be vertical. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> we have some dear friends who right now uh, need your prayers, praise God. We uh, do. That uh, are going through some hard times, praise God. You know, it really doesn't matter if you know their names or not, praise God. It's, I guess it is better. Mm -hmm. But praise the Lord, when I pray, I pray for all people. That's right. That are, uh, those who can receive what God has for them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we can pray and pray and pray. Uh, but if it's not their will, it's not going to do any good. Praise no. God. It has to be according to their will. They have to accept what Jesus mm -hmm. does, what Jesus did at the cross. Praise God. So uh, without any further ado, Pencil Unless and you paper. Think of something else. Have nope. you got a reading for us? I don't this morning. I don't. I don't. Okay. I just right. knew we was going to be announcing the Beacon Park, and <laughs> okay. and I'm I'm wondering about the Fiddler's con con Fiddler's Convention. If anybody knows anything about that, let me know. Yeah, that's something else. That just if, let me tell I you. I miss something. it. If you like if you like country music and bluegrass gospel. Yeah, blue. Yeah. At its best. They usually have that out at the junior college. Praise God. I don't know when it's going to be. I wish if somebody knows the dates, we'd sure like to put it on. But that is a real, real experience. It Praise is. God. It is. Fantastic musicians around the So country. if anybody knows anything about it, give me a text or call. Yeah, praise the Lord. Give me your number right. 870-416-8114. Praise the Lord. So if you know anything about what's going on, give us a call and we'll put it on. Praise the Lord. Well, we're we gonna go. go we're gonna go to some music and we'll be right back. God bless. It's an old one but a good one. It's in a lot of hymn books. It's called If I Could Hear My Mother Pray Again. We're gonna be playing in B flat. But uh, some of us may not have had a praying mother, but you, you may have had a praying grandmother or dad or grandpa or cousin or aunt. Whoever it is, picture in your mind. They're praying. They're gone on to heaven now, but if you could just hear them pray one more time, wouldn't that be a good memory? Let's just sing this. If I could hear my mother pray again. How sweet and happy see those days of which I dream when memory 
calls them now and then. And with that rapture swing, my weary heart would be if I could hear my mother pray again. She used to pray that I, Paul Jesus, would rely and always walk the shining gospel way. song that, that I've sung for years and it's an old song, I don't know where I got it I just heard it, it's called Heaven it's going to be in a kid day but you know um, when you go through stuff, you get tired of fighting the battle, you get sick or you've lost a loved one, you miss your most of your family's maybe gone and heaven just sounds a little bit sweeter sometimes, but that's what we're supposed to do is look to heaven because that's going to be our final place Amen. of Praise pure joy Lord. in Jesus. Okay. Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Life has been so good, I can't complain. When I'm down, God gives me strength to rise again. Oh, but I'm so weary. From the troubles of it all So I'll listen Oh how I'll listen For oh, his call For heaven Is sounding sweeter All the time Seems like lately It's always On my mind And someday I'm going to leave this world behind For heaven It's sounding sweeter all the time Oh, but it's so hard to lose a loved one to the grave But we had that blessed hope that Jesus gave That he shall wipe all those teardrops from our eyes when we meet him in that land beyond the skies for heaven, heaven is sounding sweeter all the time seems like lately it's always on my mind and someday I'm going to leave this world behind. For heaven, it 
sounded sweeter all the time. Yeah, someday, someday I'm gonna, gonna leave, leave this world behind. For heaven, it sounded sweeter all the time. This is a song that I've sang for a long time, all these songs I have, but this is a, it's called He Means the World to Me. And I, other than myself, I don't know anybody else who sings it. It's in the key of C. And uh, I just, I like the song, so I sing it quite a bit, Amen. don't I, honey? You know, there's a lot of truth <coughs> in this song, praise God. Mm -hmm. doesn't, Jesus doesn't mean a lot anymore, seems like, to a lot of people, but he means a lot to us. Praise God. The world would like just not even think about him because well, they could care sure. nothing. The world cares nothing about Jesus, but you're right. He means everything to us. That's it. Praise God. And he God. should mean everything to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. They lifted angry voices and then cried crucify. They were glad to watch him suffer. They were happy when he died. Gambled for his garments while he hung on a tree. No, Jesus didn't mean much to this world, but he means the world to me. My life was down to nothing. Jesus turned my world around. My hopes and dreams were shattered and lying scattered on the ground. Oh, yes, I really love him, yet it's plain to see that Jesus didn't mean much to this old world, but he means the world to me. An angry Roman soldier heard him say, I thirst, just a simple plea for Jesus. But they made a mockery of him first. Someone said that times are changing. But anyone can see that Jesus still don't mean much to this old world. But he means the world to me. My life was down to nothing. Jesus turned my world around. Song's gonna be in a key of G. It's called "He Will Calm the Troubled Waters," and that's in your life. Uh, whatever problem you have, the storms are raging against you. You know, He's there to help you through it. He knows about your struggles. Yes, He does. Praise God. He knows what you're gonna face. You know, in this troubled time that we're in right now, yeah. He said troublesome times will come. Praise the Lord. And and there you are, and here they are right in the midst of them, of all these things going on around mm -hmm. us everywhere, and people protesting. Uh, you know, what's alarming to me is that uh, they show pictures of uh, school teachers and principals that are out destroying and burning and pillaging. Mm -hmm. They even had some pictures the other day of law enforcement on their time off was out protesting and trying to burn down the police station. So we're in trouble. Time. Yeah, we are. And uh, the whole thing about this song is uh, when all this is happening, you need peace in your soul. You need peace in your life. And only Jesus Christ can bring that. So praise the Lord. Yeah, we need peace. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you another time is uh, when you have a loved one and you're sitting in a hospital room and it's dark in there and there's nobody else there. That's a, that's a tough time. 
and you don't know whether your loved one's going to live or not or what all they're going to have to face. And you know nobody can really help you except Jesus. And those times, and it, really in every time, but it seems like when it comes to a sickness, it's like it's harder than a yeah. physical thing. When, but when it comes to a sickness, it's tough. But anyway, when he's you, there. Yeah, when, you, when you come down, when you're in that hospital room like you're talking about, the only thing that makes any difference at that time is, is that person that you're with, are they saved? Do they know really Jesus does. Christ as Lord and Savior? Nothing else matters. I mean, uh, you can say this and you can say that, but the whole thing comes The most down important to thing Christ. matters, yeah. And then if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you'll feel peace about that. Yep. Hallelujah. Praise yep. God. We're all going to go, either by grave or by the rapture. Praise God. So mm -hmm. you're the one who makes that decision. That's Praise right. the Lord. If your heart is broken with some grief or sorrow you do not have to bear it all alone for i know someone who knows about your struggles and he'll be standing there when all your friends have gone yes he will call the troubled waters of your soul take that old broken heart and make it whole and when the storms of your life grow dark and cold oh he will calm the troubled waters of your soul deep within the heart of man there is a longing to find happiness and all oh, such peace of mind. But if your heart, it grows weary from searching, just turn to Jesus' soul and oh my friend, you'll find that he will calm the troubled waters of your soul. Take that old broken heart and make it the storms of your life grow dark and cold. Oh, he will calm the troubled waters of your soul. Yes, he will calm the troubled waters of your soul. Okay, this is called I Found the Lily in the Valley in a Kid G. Praise the Lord. All alone and broken hearted, trying to calm the raging battles in my mind. In search of many answers that my troubled soul just couldn't seem to find. I saw a flower blooming where there was no and I knew not that this flower would change the rest of my life. I, I found a lily, lily in, in my valley. valley. I, I found strength when I was warm. I found a place to leave my burden. I found a refuge from the storm, a place where I could train my dark skies to beaming rays of sunshine. I found a lily in my valley, and he blooms all the time. If you're down and broken hearted and you just can't seem to find peace of mind, you're searching for your answers, but your problems are getting worse all the time. Just reach your hand to Jesus, He'll take you in and break the ties that bind.
It'll be your lily in the valley. It'll be your strength when you're warm. It'll be a place to leave your burdens. It'll give you refuge from the storm. A place where you can trade your dark skies for beaming rays of sunshine. You'll be a lily in the valley, and you'll bloom all the time. I found my lily in the valley. I found strength when I was warm. I found a place to leave my burden. He gave me refuge from the storm. Place where, where I could, could train my dark skies, the beaming rays of, of sunshine. sunshine. I found, found a lily in my valley, and he blooms all the time. Just He's found a lily in the valley, and he blooms all the time. Praise the Lord. You yes, know he is. He is. who is the lily of the valley. Yes, he is. Jesus Christ. Praise yes, the Lord. You know. you know, they speak in the Bible many times being the lily of the valley, the peace, and and Rose of Sharon. He's so many beautiful things. Oh, He's everything to us. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, the, well, the important thing is, folks, is that. Finding the lily in your valley. What does that mean? It means that I found a Savior. That's Jesus Christ. And, and, and from that time on, I had a place where I could go to with my burdens. I had a place that I can found, find peace. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're, if you're in turmoil, if your life is just destroyed, praise God, you need Jesus Christ. Can I at this time mention of someone we met at, yeah. the, at the auction the other day, and I told her, I'd tell her, we said hi. Yeah, Darlene Fowler, I just want to say hello, and I'm glad you watch our show. She come to us and said, I've watched your show for 10 years. Yeah, praise God. And I just praise God for people who are watching our show. Amen. Thank yeah. you. And it reminds us that we've been on for a lot longer than 10 years. Almost praise 18, God. about yeah. 18 years yeah. now. Yeah, praise the Lord, and you know, and all that time, uh, I don't think that we've ever varied from the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. and Savior. And only through Christ Jesus can you find peace. That's and true. That's, he, he is the lily in the valley. And praise I just praise God. him for that so much. But ain't, uh, thanks for all that you do, the letters, the cards. And, and when you see us somewhere, don't be afraid to come up to, to us and say hi. We praise love we Lord. love yeah, to talk to you it, and it encourages us when you it say does. Hello to us. It praise does. Them. No matter where people, we're at. We know people are out there listening. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We uh we had our little end of the month gospel singing here That's at right. the at the uh chapel uh this last week, praise God. Had uh, what, eighteen people? Mm -hmm. Praise God. So mm -hmm. which we think that's a lot. And we just get together and have a good time uh, playing, and we try to keep it gospel uh, as much as possible. Absolutely. Praise God. Some people, I don't know if you call some of Hank Williams' songs gospel, but... Uh, well, we, I do. House yeah, of we Gold. Like and <laughs> Praise God. And uh, a lot of folks come together, and I'll tell you something, we're, we're kind of... Uh, I don't know, our fellowshipping, uh, Carolyn's got the recipe for oh, some, don't, don't touch some, it, huh? yeah. some fine soup. And I'm telling you what, uh, we, when we come together, we bring food, and uh, there's nothing better than good fellowship and good food unless it's good music. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And now you've got an unbeatable <coughs> combination. No, so... Uh, Different people bring different things, and we all get together and share, and we have a good time and usually gain a pound or two. Yeah, I can still smell the fried chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I come yeah. in the building today, it was yeah. like, fried chicken? It yeah. was good. <laughs> uh, 
So, I mean, it, 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 it's just the good time. We got Great a lot job. of good people. They're all local people, yeah. and they we just have a good time together. We're not rushed, and everybody gets a turn to sing what they want to sing. It's yeah. a, it, and uh, Sister Jean, she brings her little tapes, where you yeah. call them, uh, CD tapes, mm -hmm. and, and she sings that way, and others just play music, praise God, and we just have a good time. I like the live better, but, you know, there's some people who can't sing with live That's music, right. and I understand and, that. Yeah, and uh, sometimes the recording will break down in the middle of it, and we're playing the long, so we just continue, continue right on. Continue on, I've done that, like done that there. before. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we invite you to come out. You'll enjoy it. Every end of the month, we have yeah, a... Last little, Saturday of each month from 3 to 5. And then the next day, of end of the month, Sunday, will be Belfont 5. That's it. Then Belfont Church has theirs on Sunday, uh, 5 to 7. Yeah. Or whenever. We go around twice is what it amounts to. Yeah. And sometimes we get talking, tick, get tickled, so it takes a little bit longer. <laughs> but, and we, we hoorah <laughs> each other. We don't have... If you can't have fun as a Christian, something's bad wrong. Yeah. If a Christian can't be happy, who can be happy? That's it. And so we just, we enjoy it. But anyway, you're invited out every last Saturday of each month between right 3 here. and 5 o'clock. And uh, it, we had rain and everything. We still had good turnout. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It was really awesome. It's, we live at 6450 Riddle Drive. Yeah. If you ever want to know the address where we live. Chapel's right here on the property. We yep. have it all right here. Come out Highway 43 like you're going to Compton mm -hmm. uh, and Ponca, and uh, we're on the left as you yep. head out there about four miles from the junction of 7 and 43. Love so, to have you. Yeah, praise God. Well, we're going to get into our yeah. study today we're over in the book of 2 uh, Thessalonians, praise God. Okay. And I, I, I want to look at this in view of what's going on uh, in the world today. Okay. Praise God. Because uh, <laughs> uh, what I'm seeing uh, is, uh, as in the days of Noah, uh, people are just going around and, and uh, every thought is continually evil. Now, I'm not talking about Christians. I'm talking about some professing Christians mm -hmm. uh, who are not, praise God, and the world. And the church is getting more like the world every day. Yes, it is. And we're told to separate ourselves from that. And it takes an effort in today's world to keep yourself separate from the world. And we need to understand that when we dedicate ourselves to the Lord, God watches over us and keeps us. The thing that we have to guard against is allowing our mind to follow the, the worldly way and still go to church and those things and profess that we know Jesus Christ, because, but our actions override uh, what we say. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that he was born of a virgin, praise the Lord, if he was sacrificed himself. He was the sacrifice for our sins at Calvary, praise God. When, when the blood and water ran forth out of him, when he rose from the grave, praise God, when he ascended into heaven, those are true things. I realize that in today's society that's very difficult to believe, but praise God, that's one of the things that shows that you're a true Christian is that you do believe those Absolutely. Things. And because you believe, it changes your life. You are not, if you are a true born-again Christian, you are not the old man made over. You are a new creation. Praise God. God has taken everything in your past and washed it away. Clean as you can be. Just clean as a newborn babe. Praise God. And so we want to maintain that. Why? Because God loved us so much that he was willing to give of himself, his only son, so that we don't have to spend eternity in hell. And, wow, when I even think about hell, how bad it's going to be, I don't think we had any imagination. With volcanoes going off or anything, it would be like me just being descending down into that volcano and never burning up, mm. but to feel the pain of the burn. And, and that. But anyway, praise God. Uh, 
I'd, so when we read in Thessalonians, when we read about the catching away of the church, we're talking about true believers, mm -hmm. not somebody that's just professing with their mouth, but believing in their heart. And because you believe in your heart, mm -hmm. you do the things that God asks you to do. Mm -hmm. He's the master. We're the servant. That's right. And let me tell you something. If in today's life, if I had a master that met all of my need, a place to live, good food to eat, a, a car to drive, all whatever the is necessary. For instant healing? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, praise God. I mean, and not just getting get my own beans and taters, mm -mm. praise the Lord, but I'm talking about a master who takes care of his, of his servants. I would gladly be a servant in that house, mm -hmm. just as when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you too will gladly be a servant in the master's house. That's right. Well, what does a servant do? A servant does the will of the master. Yes. And God never asks more of us than what we can provide. The trouble with today's society is that people want everything, but they don't want to put forth any effort to get it. That is so true. And so that's what we're dealing with in today's society. And mm. people, let me tell you something. If you talk about Jesus or, talk, or about God or anything out in public, they literally want to crucify you. The fact is, some churches literally want to crucify you over mm. what's going on. So uh, I, I owe, there's an old song, I owe a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not that's owe. That's right. And that's what salvation is about. I could never, ever work enough or buy my way into heaven. That's true. It's got to come by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so having said that, I want to read uh, here, praise God. And we, here's, I guess, kind of what brought this to mind is uh, recently we drive down through town. And we've seen all these signs, help wanted, help yeah. wanted. Everywhere. Uh, uh, we went, what's that restaurant? Colton, $150 sign-up bonus Yeah. Uh, to go to work. Uh, Pace Industries over there, what's it, $1,100 or something like that, dollars. Just to stay uh, on the job. Uh, yeah, to trying to get somebody to come to work. Mm. <coughs> and we talk to restaurant owners and say, well, are you going to have dining in? Well, Maybe today, if we can get enough workers here to, to support it. But probably we won't because we simply can't get the help that we need. They can't compete with that free money coming in from the government. That's it. That's it exactly. And so the, basically what it amounts to is the government is paying people $15 excuse me, an mm -hmm. hour not to work. Uh, and that's, that's anti-Bible. Praise God. I don't care what they say. If you don't work, you don't eat. We're going to see that yeah. in a too. Yeah, we're going to read Praise that Lord. today. I think the worst thing that the government has ever done is give away free money. Yeah. Uh, because people find out that they can do nothing and get paid for it. That's right. And that's a curse. Uh, pretty soon you get to where you think it's owed to you. And nobody, you owe it to yourself. The government doesn't owe you anything. What's happening in the government today is being done for votes, for power. To, but anyway, praise God. I want to go over just briefly, and then we're going to come back and read this. Hallelujah. In chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians, praise God. But I'm asking Sister Carolyn in chapter 3 of Second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. and because... Uh, uh, Starting at verse 6 is where I want her to read. And she's going to read down through verse 10. Praise God. And we may go a little bit further than that. But then we're going to go back and start with chapter 2. Okay. Would you read that, Sister Carol? I sure will. Chapter 3 of Second Thessalonians, verse 6. Yeah. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. See what he's saying? He, uh, he, Paul is saying, I'm telling you, 
withdraw yourself, separate yourself away from this unbelief. And he's saying brother, every yeah. brother. Yeah, and from, from every brother that walketh mm. disorderly. See, th this is a case where, yes, I profess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, but I'm going to act like the devil. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, continue. I'm sorry. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. See, Paul said, we set an example while we were there. Yeah. You know right. how. It says Amen. right here. And, you know, that's the thing. All Christians should be setting an example mm -hmm. of how to live properly as a Christian. That's right. Okay. Verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. So Paul is saying, you know, we came, we got nothing free, we right. didn't take up uh, anything, we didn't eat <laughs> your food, we didn't sleep in your bed for nothing. Praise God. We came and we gave. We showed you an example of how you're supposed to live. And right here it says, we didn't eat your bread for nothing. We worked for that bread. That's right. We worked for Day it. Day and night. I, 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 when I was a pastor, and you've heard me say this mm -hmm. so many times before, boy, I milked many a cow and put up many a, a bale of hay and stretched miles of fencing. And I thought off the windshields of people and pulled them out of ditches. Yeah. And just and those are things as examples of what you should be doing right. just to help your brother. Here's the thing. Doesn't make any difference whether they're saved or not. It should help people. By your good example, people get saved. Mm -hmm. All right. Continue. All right. Nine. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Yeah. yeah. A, if you will do, we're, we're trying to show you how we ought to live. Yeah. Okay. Now, verse 10. Both of us are one with a whammy. Okay. <laughs> For even when we were with you, this we commanded you. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. Oh, my. That's a little strong. You don't work, you don't eat. Hmm. Praise God. I, I hope you've got that underlined in your Bible in, in 14 different colors uh, with <laughs> emphasis and stars all around it and everything. Scripture says very plain, plainly, if you don't work, you, you don't, don't eat. eat. Welfare, we need to do away with it. Now, let me be the first one to say I am not against people who aren't able aid to work. for people who are unable to work. That's right. And here's my thing about that. If all the freeloaders mm -hmm. would get off of the welfare system, there would be a whole lot more to take care of the medicine, the food, the warmth, the housing, and everything for those who truly need, need it. it. And I don't care what color you are, if you are on welfare, you need to get off of it and go out and find you a job. That's if why you're we able mentioned to the work. fact right. that 20 different places on the bypass alone in Harrison, Arkansas, got signs out. Help wanted. Help wanted. Help wanted. And you can't even get a decent meal in a restaurant. Why? Because people are sitting at home drawing welfare. Mm -hmm. The, you can call it what you want to, but here's my opinion. If there's one single job open anywhere in this county, then there should not be one red cent of unemployment paid out. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the whole United States. Mm -hmm. And that I'm also, and I'll go on record as saying <laughs> this, we don't support other countries. No. Let's take care of America First. This Let's, is the biggest missionary area right now that there ever yeah, was. We need to pull States. all the missionaries back from all these Get them other over countries. here. And I'll tell you something else, and I know I get differing opinions on this too. Uh, Paul didn't wait until he got money to go out as a missionary. None of them did. And he'd go to churches saying, hey, you're supporting me out there. He just went and preached and let God lead their souls. Praise God. So people that are waiting until the money's there or the opportunity's there, praise God, to go, something's wrong. Well, you they go didn't, in faith. I can remember when they didn't say, well, if I get enough money and get every my need met before I get there, I'll go. Yeah. I, they didn't do that. They just went. That's right. John G. If you've never read John G. Lake, you should do Ooh, that. Praise God. Watch how it. God works miracles 
when you go in obedience to his call. John okay. G. Lake, okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, you want me to read 11? 11, or, yeah. Okay. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Ooh, ooh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I bet, you know, I, bet, I think it would be interesting to walk into a church today and say, okay, how many people here are drawing unemployment or welfare? Ooh. Huh? Ooh. You know, if you were doing all that, then you wouldn't be out here rioting and gossiping. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's exactly what Paul's saying. You got people that are sitting around here doing nothing, and all they want to do is run the brethren down. If they had it going on them that, <coughs> back in those days. I'm sure it's going on the. Oh, now. of course, no, it's going on right now. What twelve? Yeah. Now, them that are such are command. We command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. That's it. Not the governments, not the churches, not their neighbors. Their own bread. You work and do your own. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, 13? Yes. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Wow, and 15. Ye count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So you're not supposed to, I sympathize with you for the plight that you're in, that you're too lazy to go out and but work. get over it. Yeah, get over it, praise God. Not as an enemy, praise the Lord, but to talk to him about what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. What you're doing is wrong. In the eyes of God, it is wrong. And when churches encourage these things, mm. they are encouraging people to come against the will of God. That's true. If you don't work, you don't eat. Mm -hmm. And when you find people that are robbing, if you will, excuse me, I know this is hard, robbing the government of the money that should be going to people who have a true need, mm -hmm. then the Bible says disassociate yourself from that person. Not in anger, but to, and to tell them, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Uh, not as, you're not treating them as an enemy. No. But explaining to them, hey, there's a better way, it and it's through Christ Jesus. It doesn't hurt to go to them and say, look, I love you, and I know you're a brother in Christ, but what you're doing is wrong, and this is how come it's wrong. The Bible okay. says it's wrong. Yeah, what are you going to do when the welfare runs out? Because it will. And it's going to. It's going to. Anybody that thinks that this money just comes boiling up out of the ground, we just print more, you need to understand that the American dollar is almost worthless on the, on the world economy. That's right. So. And our economy is definitely going to crash over it. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, so, okay. let's go back over here, uh, and we're going to go into chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. And the reason I'm talking about this, what we just talked about just now, is exactly what Scripture says is going to take place just before the catching away of the church. Okay. Praise God. Because it says, as in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. their thoughts were constantly evil. That's right. Nothing in their heart was denied them. Every evil thought was nothing. No good was in their heart at all. All That's evil. It. It's, it's all about me, me, me. Me, me, me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all I want is my fun. All I want, I just want to have the money to, to enjoy and have a big time and party. That's it. That's what it amounts to. And here's the interesting thing. I was studying this morning at about 4 o'clock this morning, praise mm -hmm. God. And I was reading that. And, and let me turn over there for just okay. a moment, praise okay. God. Over in Genesis, I think about the sixth chapter or something like that. Praise God. Uh, here we go. In chapter 6 and verse 5. 5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Only. Oh. You know, here's the thing. What happened to all the lineage of Seth? And that was the question I was looking oh at. Oh, my goodness. What yeah. happened to Seth's lineage? The, 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 Christ, the believing part. Mm -hmm. The obedient to God. Mm. So the the overall force of evil took it over oh until God. all men, all men, every thought, 
was just in, oh, I just want to have fun. I don't want to have to work. I just want to take my drugs. I want to take my alcohol. I want to have sex. I want to do all of these things. But I don't want to be held accountable for it. In fact, let's kill God off as they tried to do it at the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. And that way we won't have to worry about somebody judging us. And that's right. exactly what's going on today. Governments are coming against the church to try to wipe out anything that has to do with well-being or well-doing or godly, if you Family will. Family-oriented. Anything. All they, don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to sin the way I want to. We're exactly like it was in the days of Noah. Okay. Chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Listen to this. Now you're talking about true Christians. And sometimes new Christians are having difficulty keeping up. How mm -hmm. many of you remember when you first came to Jesus, praise the Lord, you had a tough time learning and doing, and especially when you're old friends are right. trying to drag you back under, praise the Lord. But listen, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Praise God. So what he's saying, as in the days that we're living, as in the days of Noah. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Complete. Complete lawlessness. Mm -hmm. We see these mock uh, courts, like yeah. they just had, uh, which was a farce. Mm -hmm. uh, praise God. When, you, when we up hold criminals, when we uphold lawbreakers and give them a place of honor in our society, something is bad wrong. I mean, people use the worst people in the world today for a reason to riot. This Black Lives Matter. Well, let me put it this way. All lives matter, especially the unborn lives. Why don't we hear the uproar over the murder of those indefensible children? Praise God. When somebody like Floyd, was that his name? Floyd or whatever Floyd, it is? Floyd, I think. Yeah, praise God. I mean, this man is already dead on his feet, just ain't fell over and died yet. Praise God. And yet they want to Crucified. accuse somebody of murder. And you don't, I, I read the paper on a day to day basis, praise God, and see where blacks are killing blacks. And blacks are killing whites, but you never see that oh, no. in the news. Oh, no. All you see oh, no. is uh, this stuff about, well, we, we're too white. And, and I'm sorry, folks. God made me this way. I am the color that I am because that's what God desired for me to be. I'll admit, I don't know what I would do if I was a, a woman, if I was black, or Hispanic? if I was born in Africa or someplace. I don't know, but I wasn't. I was born here in the United States, white. And male. And male. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I can't get over this. A, ki a kid, when it's born, used to, the doctor said, okay, that's a boy. Yeah, that's a girl. Like a boy to me. And now it's like, well, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I'm just going to leave this birth well, certificate open, and y'all can decide what it is yeah, later when on. When he's 18, he decides what he wants to be. No, they're wait till they're eight years old or oh, yeah. four years old. How does a kid know what it is? Well, it, they're told by their. It's a shame. The foolishness of the parent. Yes. Any parent that tries to tell a child that he is a little girl or he don't know what he is, or I'm talking about a boy child. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Something's bad wrong. Bad wrong with the parent. Yeah. Does that? But see, today's society wants you. Oh, well, you can't judge me. I have the right to my opinion, but so do I. So does Carolyn. So does everybody. Your right to say what you want to, praise God, or, or do what you want to, ends halfway to my right. Hello. 
there's a space in between there, and when you cross that line and come into my territory and start that stuff, now you're going to suffer for it. Mm-hmm. Praise God. You, if you'll take care of your own, you won't have problems. But people now today are going out making problems. We've got a problem right here in Harrison, Arkansas, of all places, people calling us a racist town. You know, the only the only racism that I see here in is against Harrison, the whites. Arkansas is our local government, our you chamber of it. commerce. These are the people who keep stirring the pot, stirring the pot. It's all Just a political be, thing. Too. Hate to get off on this, I but know praise it. God. But until Obama came in. Blacks and whites got along fine. I thought we did. We did. I thought we ever saw. I mean, just imagine watching Archie Bunker today. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, praise God. But what I, the reason I'm saying all this is that Satan is taking every advantage he yes. can everywhere to turn people against Christians. That's true. Against God. This, uh, this virus thing was nothing more than a control thing. Mm-hmm. And the target for it was the church. It sure was. The family and the church. You, you see, all, man, they, you could go do almost anything else you wanted to, but as long if you it was went sinful. to church, they yeah. want to put you in jail. You go get, go get abortion, go get alcohol, go to Walmart. That's it. But Didn't, don't go to mom and pop store and a little restaurant and go to church. Oh, you'll go to jail for that. That's right. Didn't slow down a bit. Uh-uh. Are, are and we, we hollered I, about this I'm whole time, but nobody time listened. Hollered. Anyway, I didn't get to what I want to talk about. I'm sorry. But what I'm saying is this. Praise God in the last few remaining okay. seconds that we've got. Do everything that you do as unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. God's in charge. Praise God. You just worry about serving God the way you know how to as a true believing Christian. According don't to the word of God. Don't worry about the government taking care of you. God said, I'll take care of you. I take care of the birds. I take care... Uh, of the fields, the lilies of the field, everything. It's my responsibility because I adopted you as my child. Amen. And I will take care of you. Yes, he will. Praise God. Wow. But everything's according to the word of God. You know, you it have is. to remember. Trust uh, God. Trust God. And remember. <laughs> and remember. You, you shall, shall know the truth, truth and the truth will make you free. free. God bless. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.